Hey, Stargazers. Welcome back to another episode of Skywatch Wednesday. My name is Nick. I'm a theater's manager at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, Illinois. In today's episode, we'll be talking about the summer nighttime sky and some of the cool things that you can see this summer as you go outside and look up. Now, if you're just getting into stargazing, a great place to start this season is with a grouping of three stars that you can easily see even from light polluted skies. In late June, these three stars will be visible in the east about an hour after sunset. And by late August, they'll be high overhead by the time the sky gets dark. This is the Summer Triangle. Each one of the bright stars is part of a different constellation, but together they form this bright, eye-catching pattern. The brightest of the three stars is called Vega, and it's the fourth brightest star in the nighttime sky. And it's also the third brightest visible from mid-northern latitudes. The name Vega comes from Arabic, meaning eagle or vulture. And it's part of the constellation Lyra the Harp, or Lyre, and indeed it's often shown as an eagle holding a harp. Deneb is the brightest star in the constellation of Cygnus the Swan. It marks the tail of the swan, and you can imagine looking up at a swan in flight, with Deneb as the tail, two wings outstretched, and a long neck leading to the head of the swan. Although Deneb is much dimmer than Vega in our sky, it also lies about a hundred times farther about 2,600 light years distant. Deneb is about 5,000 times brighter than Vega, though, but because of its distance, it appears a bit dimmer. The third star in the Summer Triangle is Altair, and it marks the eagle Aquila. This bright pattern of the Summer Triangle will be visible in the evening sky all the way until December, but it's at its highest and most obvious in the summer months. Now, if you have a chance this summer to get to a dark sky on a moonless night, you have an awesome chance then to catch a view of the majestic Milky Way. From dark skies on a moonless night, it's an amazing sight. Summertime in the Northern Hemisphere is the best time for viewing the Milky Way because its brightest sections are highest in the sky at this time. You can see a different part of the Milky Way in the Northern winter, but it isn't nearly as bright in the sky. The Milky Way, this band of hazy light across the sky, is our view of our galaxy from the inside. Every star we see with the naked eye is part of the Milky Way galaxy, but we see most of the stars along that band of light, the plane of the Milky Way. The summertime Milky Way holds some incredible treasures to view with binoculars or a small telescope. Areas that appear as brighter smudges to the naked eye start to show up as clusters and nebulae with some magnification. Some newer smartphones also have night sky or even astrophotography modes, allowing you to capture some fun point-and-shoot images from a dark sky. The southern part of the Milky Way is well-framed by two zodiac constellations. You can find the bright star Antares, even from light-polluted skies, and it marks the heart of Scorpius the Scorpion. In a darker sky, you can then trace out the claws and also the long tail with a stinger at the end. East of Scorpius is Sagittarius the Archer. Overall, this is a large and fairly dim constellation, but there is a bright pattern of stars that forms a teapot shape. And you can even imagine the steam from the teapot rising up and forming the Milky Way. Now, there aren't a lot of opportunities this summer to view the planets in the evening sky because they're mostly up in the morning right now. However, you do have a chance, if you wait up a little bit later, to catch a good view of Saturn. It rises before midnight at the beginning of summer, but rises basically at sunset by the end of August. It's currently in the constellation of Aquarius, which is a very faint constellation and pretty tough to identify. But Saturn is nice and bright and will be rising far to the left of Scorpius and Sagittarius when those constellations are positioned due south. Saturn is a great view, even through small telescopes, but you will want to wait until it's higher in the sky for a clear view. A small backyard scope will show you the disk of the planet, as well as a few of the moons and, of course, the beautiful rings. Your first glimpse of Saturn's rings through a telescope is truly special, so definitely try to get out and see them this summer. A little bit closer to home, the moon will be putting on a show as we have four full moons this summer. The first will be the day after the summer solstice on June 21st, when the strawberry moon will shine all night. Then in July, we have the buck moon on July 21st, followed by the sturgeon moon on August 19th, and the harvest moon right before the fall equinox on September 17th. Now, we don't always get four full moons in a season, and when we do, the third of the four is called a seasonal blue moon. So look out for the blue moon this August. There's another type of blue moon where you get two full moons in a calendar month. That's called a monthly blue moon. 
The last one of those was actually last August, and the next one will be in May of 2026. Every August, the Earth passes through the orbit of a comet called Swift-Tuttle, and this creates the amazing Perseid meteor shower. The comet is nowhere to be seen easily right now, as it last passed near the Sun in 1992, but its orbit is filled with bits of dust and rubble. These strike Earth's atmosphere at about 40 miles per second, creating the short bursts of light known as meteors or shooting stars. On the night of August 12th into the morning of the 13th, you could expect to see as many as 100 meteors per hour in a perfectly dark sky, especially once the moon sets around midnight. But you can see Perseids in lower numbers anywhere from mid-July to the end of August. You'll know a meteor is a Perseid if you trace its path back and it points toward the constellation of Perseus, which will be rising in the northeast a couple hours after sunset. Meteor showers are named for the constellation that they appear to radiate from, so the Perseids get their name from their radiant constellation of Perseus the Hero. Meteor showers require no binoculars or telescope, just some patience and as dark a sky and as wide a view as possible. Even from cities, you can expect to see some of the brighter meteors, though far fewer than you'll see in a dark sky. Well, that's what we've got for you this episode. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Adler's YouTube channel and also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Clear skies. We'll see you next time.